We're up to episode 8 on our arcade dev journey. This time we'll continue with our fixed screen display. Now we'll implement it in Verilog on the Mister. Then I'll talk about what's coming up in future episodes. Okay, so we've got our three files here um, for making that fixed screen uh, display with Verilog. Uh, we've got our TTL chips uh, file, our ROM file, and our tank B FPGA file. So what have we changed in the TTL chips? All we've done is we've added down the bottom the module LS157, and that's a quadruple two-line uh, to one line data selector. So if you remember from the last episode, we've got the um, the zero and the one uh, and an output. So input zero, input one, output. And uh, they're, they're four bits wide, each input and four bits wide on the output. We've got a um, an enable pin, which is low. And then we've got a selector which will select um, which of the outputs to, to output. Um, so pretty simple assign statement here. So assign uh, Z equals, I'm saying Z because I'm in Texas. Uh, if uh, the chip enable is low and the selector is low, then the output is gonna be input zero. And if the chip enable is low and the select is high, then it's going to be input one is going to be selected. Um, and then we have a default statement just in case one of those two doesn't work, um, just as a, a fallback, which is all the bits are zero. Um, hopefully that never actually occurs. Um, so that's the only change there. Um, and that implements that. Um, so if you remember from the last episode, we had uh, effectively the 157s were being used to select either the input from the CPU or the input from the um, the address counter, the screen address counter. Now what we're going to see is um, we're going to diverge uh, soon on these episodes with the hardware is going to use um, the input with the CPU and the, the uh, screen address counter and Verilog isn't actually going to be using that because we can't do the same thing. Um, but we're going to use this 157 anyway, just as a kind of input. But in the end, in Verilog, we're not going to use the CPU input um, because it's going to be done slightly differently. On the 107 JK flip flop, a subscriber had pointed out that I had an error in the um, TTL chips file for the 107. Um, we didn't have an asynchronous clear which basically means that um, what you need is is for it to clear the contents of that JK flip-flop uh, whether it's on a clock cycle or not. Um, so totally independent of uh, the leading edge of the clock. Um, so I've had to change the code there and just make sure that we're also detecting in the sensitivity list um, for a uh, negative edge of a clear. Um, and if we get one of those, then then we clear the reset. Uh, we clear the uh, the JK flip flop. So I've corrected that in the GitHub. 
uh, for all the episodes that use that code. Okay, so that's the ttlchips.v. Um, the next file is ROM. Um, so what we added here was the ROM 2116MRW, which is Mr. Retro Wolf. So this is just a ROM specifically set up to be loading that uh, Mr. Retro Wolf screen.txt file. So that's, that's where we hold our screen memory. And it's exactly the same as the last one you saw. Um, it's got an address which is um, uh, that wide, 11 bits wide, 10 down to zero. Um, it's got a clock. It's got a chip select, which is low, and it's got an output 8 bits wide, which is Q. We've got the register um, 8 bits wide of ROM, and that's 2K. And then this initial begin, um, as we said before, it's read memory from hex, and it reads that screen uh, file, the text file. Now the text file is here, and it's just got our um, zeros and we've got a bit of wall there, which is the one zero, the green, the green uh, border area. And then we've got um, an another bit here. And then we start to have a, our message. Uh, if I can find it, there's a bit of message. B6 DF. Um, so that's smattered through. Um, and then uh, we have, as we had before, on every uh, clock cycle, um, if clock is uh, clock enable is low, then output uh, Q whatever the address is in that array. Um, so pretty simple, same as before. Um, and then tank battalion or tank B uh, is slowly building up. What have we changed here? So um, first thing we did is we removed from here. There was a register called DSPD in. Um, which was the uh, dip switch uh, data in uh, and that was going into that L2 chip um, which is the display input so we've removed that one because now instead of that we're going to have um, if you remember we have the output from the ROM file or the ROM chip being the input um, so we've removed that one we've added um, uh, this here which is video address and it's 12 bits wide and that attaches to the um, the 157s that we saw, and we'll see a bit lower. We're not actually using all 12 bits. Um, you saw from the ROM here, we're only using 11. Um, so that top bit is not being used uh, for that particular use. We it's used for another purpose a bit later on, um, but we're not using it uh, for this particular ROM. And then we've got an output uh, queue from the ROM. Um, so that uh, Mr. Retro Wolf 1 chip uh, output Q. Uh, so if we then go down to the other bits we've added, so this is all the same. Um, we then get to start of address buffers. Um, so we've added these. There are three LS157s, uh, B2, C2, and B3. And we've got our input zero and input one. As I said, the zeros would be the CPU. Uh, but they're all just left blank. And then the I1s, they're all the inputs from the counter. So as we said before, the 12864, 3216V8, H128, H64, 3216 and 8. So they're all the inputs. And then the other bits we're going to leave, or other inputs we're going to leave 0, 0. Um, and that gives us our address that effectively is going to be um, the address of, of, of from 000 up to um, the whatever it was 3FF uh, that we had. Okay, so that's that. We've got um, the they're all enabled, so they're all um, zero to enable them all. They're all selected on output one. So B1 means select that this uh, input as the output. And then the outputs have been um, selected as I've created a, a four bit wide output, um, B2Y, C2Y, and B3Y.
Okay, and then uh, finally we're instantiating the uh, the ROM. So as we said, ROM 2716MRW, uh, and then the name MRW1. Um, the address is the VA address, which is being counted through, as we saw up 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 above from the 157 chips. It's clocked with um, the high clock, the 18 megahertz clock. It's permanently chip selected, so B0 um, for low to keep it selected. And then the output is MRW1-Q. And then the only last change we've got is if we go and find L2. There you go, L2, if you remember, that's the input to all of our display and that is um, the input is that mrw1-q so that's the output from our rom file um, so there you go okay so um, get yourself over to the github um, and down on episode 8 uh, we've got the code for what we're talking about FPGA tank B FPGA um, download it compile it um, and then run it on the mister and you should be seeing uh, the test screen that's uh, coming up now uh, it's exactly the same as the test screen we used in the last hardware version uh, but this time showing on the mister um, so that's great, that's exactly what we need. Um, obviously this is a really simple example and we're going to start adding in a bit more complexity. On the next one we're going to have to uh, change this ROM and we're going to change it over to a RAM, uh, screen RAM and then we need to have a way to put something in the screen RAM. So that's a chance to um, bring in the CPU, the 6502 CPU. Um, so that's it's going to get a bit complicated um, in terms of uh, what we're doing there. So I'm going to try and break it up into the next episode, just looking at connecting up the CPU to um, some ROM, um, and then we can look at it in hardware and look at it in Verilog um, just on its own before we integrate it back into the tank battalion game with the display circuit and everything. We'll get an understanding of how the assembly language is working with just a simple routine. Um, and then see how that looks in, um, in some Verilog with a simulator. So let's, uh, let's see how that goes.